Hey everyone, welcome back. And this is another anime review. It's an anime short which aired during the spring. And that would be... Mangaka-san to Assistant-san, the animation, or... Comic... the comic artist and assistants, the animation. Whew. How do I start talking about this series, really? I mean... It was such an odd series, and from what I understand, yeah, right here it says, like, there's two mangas. The first manga ran from 2008 to 2012 with a total of 10 volumes. And the third manga started last year in 2013, and it's still ongoing with a total of one volume so far. Okay. So I really hope there's a second season of this. Maybe taking up to the f second manga, I'm not sure if the, they completed the first manga in this series. Probably not, because it's only 12 episodes, and... Each one of them are like 13 minutes short or something like that, somewhere around there, so... Unless, like, every single chapter is, like, really short in the first line. I highly doubt they finished it off. But, it was directed by Takeshi Furuta and written by Aita Itami and by Studio Zexis. And it's licensed by Sentai Filmworks and originally ran from April 7th, 2014 to June 23rd, 2014 with a total of 12 episodes. Okay, so Mangaka-san to Assistant Sign is very simple. Now, some people have compared the I've heard some people compare this to the anime and manga series Bakuman, which I've not seen yet, although I do really want to. Um, others have said that it's really not because Bakuman goes much in, more in depth about mangakas and whatnot. This series dabbles in with it a little bit, but it's mainly a comedy. Let's be honest here, and find funny on Wikipedia here it says comedy, drama, romance for the genre. Really, there wasn't any romance. At least not strong romance. There was, like, romantic overtones, I guess, a little bit in certain scenes. But there wasn't really any strong romance in the series, but... Anyway, so, I guess some people would compare it to a rom... I mean, I think on uh, any list it has it, it has romance under it, too, so... <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, so... The series is very simple. The plot revolves around the main character... Aito Yuki, who is a mangaka, I think it's supposed to be played off as like he's already been published, but due to him being one of those mangaka who loves to draw fan service series and that's really it, he it's really difficult for him to get published and he's not too popular either, okay, of a mangaka. Because really he loves giving cleavage shots, panty shots, right? he's one of those mangaka. Alright, and he ends up getting... Well, he, at the beginning of the series, he has an assistant, but we do see the flashback of a year prior to the start of the series when she first comes to him as the assist, as his assistant, uh, Ashisu Sahoto, who's an aspiring mangaka who hasn't actually had any public, published works yet. That's why she's his assistant, because she's trying to make her debut, but she's having so much trouble doing it, because my, all mangaka do. Okay. And that's basically the gist of it. We have Mihari Otosune, who is um, a y Yuki's editor. Then we have Rena Fuwa, um, who is another one of Yuki's assistants, who we'll see a little bit later on in the series. Then we have Sena Kuroi, who is a reoccurring assistant of Yuki's as well. She's well known in the manga industry for her for being a master of drawing so much extremely quickly and having the drawings being amazing each time. Okay. She's basically your token tsundere of the series. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. And the series revolves around lots of comedy with you know Aito being a huge fucking pervert always talking about his manga and how he admires panty shots and everything like that. And comedy ensues. Now, this series is very odd because I liked it. I did. As short as it was, I really wish that there were longer episodes. Like, I really wish there were full-length episodes with, with it being 12 episodes. I thought that would have been a lot better, but still, it's not like they're like four to seven minutes shorts. Like, a lot of anime tends to be nowadays, so I guess I can let it slide there. But, anyways, though, probably my, not a whole lot to say about the series, but I, 
but I will talk about a few things, obviously. One of the weirdest things in this series are character interactions, because... Let's talk, let's say uh, Aito and Ashisu first, okay? The two of them are obviously... Obviously compatible. Why do I say that? Well, Aito is a major masochist and Ashisu is a major sadist. And she f ends up finding out later on in the series that her dream manga to write is S&M manga. <laughs> so it's like they complete each other in a way. Okay. Um, and you know, on the outside, she does seem to reject him completely as a manga artist, but I think she enjoys hanging around with him because if she didn't, she could have left a long time ago. So either she's the most gullible woman on the planet, or she does like him at least a little bit, okay? I'm leaning more toward the latter right there, myself. Really, those are the two major characters, and they're the two best characters in the series, I think. Although, Mihari, Rina, and uh, Senna are all good, all three good characters in their own right. And there are other side characters, but none of them, none of them really matter at, at all, okay? At least in my opinion, so I'm not really going to mention them at all. Um, so, yeah, but anyways, though, overall... Mangaka-san to Assistant-san to is a very good series, okay. Oh, God. But that last fucking scene in the last episode. Okay, I need to talk about that for a second. Let me just describe it for you here, okay. Basically, Aito, being his usual perverted self, is talking about how supposedly he's able to tell per what... Um... Based on a girl's personality, he's able to tell what kind of underwear they wear. I'm not joking, that actually happened. Then, um, after he basically does that to each one of their girls, whether it was true or not, is unsure, although clearly it was true for Mihari because she said, you know, how did you know that? So clearly it was true for her. But basically all of them held her him down then so, so that Ashisu could pull, could uh, unbutton his pants and pull him down and see what he wears for underwear. Now, first off, that was a funny scene, I have to admit, and he definitely deserved it, but here's my issue that I had with it, though. First off, why was he freaking out so much? We've established up to this point that he's a major fucking masochist, okay? I mean, there was that nip-sucking scene where he he made a sleeping Santa suck his nipples. That still scars me to this day. And then there was that scene where he was begging Santa to keep whipping him. We've established up to this point that he's a major fucking masochist, so why was he freaking out there? Just took your time here. Um, so why was he freaking out here? You know... Secondly, like, okay, I've seen girls gang up on a guy if the, if the guy deserves it, you know, but I've never seen some, heard it of something like that before. <laughs> like, really, especially if supposedly every single one of those girls hates him, why the fuck they would want to see him without his pants on is beyond me. <sighs> Yeah, it makes no fucking sense. And I have another reason why Ashisu does care for, uh, or why it would be, I think it would be wrong for her to, go, to completely hate um, Aito. First off, she has said before that she doesn't hate him, so I guess that's proof enough right there, even though she acts like she hates him. But the major thing is that in the final episode, actually, the first part of the final episode, basically Aito helped her write her manga, and she sent it to the publishers, and it got rejected, but only because it, the type of s and manga it was, it was too graphic for any magazine, which, first off, that's a load of horse shit, I mean, hentai has to get published somewhere. I don't think that was a hentai, but still, you get what I mean. 
Um, I think they just did that to help progress, so they could keep the plot going, quite honestly. So it got rejected again, but she still, they still liked it. Because of Ito, she actually got closer to um, published to making her debut. Granted, she didn't yet, but she still got closer to it, and she has Ito to thank for that. So, you know what I mean? If it wasn't for him, you know, that's basically what I'm trying to say there. But overall, I enjoyed this series. I think thought it was hilarious, um, and there's lots of touching moments in it as well, which I thought was refreshing. My only major complaint is I wish that, well, two actually. One, as I said before, I kind of wish that it was a f there were full-length episodes instead of just shorts. Um, and my second complaint is I wish that it was a type of series where it would it could keep all of the comedy that it has and all of the gags that it has while also having character development to get, develop all these characters. And not I don't just mean Aito and Ashisu, but I mean Mihari and uh, Senna and maybe even Rina as well. You know, and get them closer together and stuff. That would have, I think that would have made the series a lot better too. I don't know if it does that in the second manga or not. I do plan on reading it eventually though. But yes. Anyways, though, I think I'm going to pretty much wrap up this review though. I definitely recommend it if you're into this type of thing. Um, but from what I've heard, if you've read and or watched Bakuman, don't expect the exact same thing because it is quite different. Although then again, I like I said before, I haven't read or watched. Bakuman. So, yeah. But anyways, overall, hope you enjoyed this review, guys. See you after, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.